Hello, my name's Ryan Weber, and today on Build It, we are going to build an animated text menu fly-in. All right, let's jump into it. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna look at the wrong way of animating. Not so wrong, but less efficient. And because we're going to create something that's a little bit complicated and, and is doing a fair bit of text animation, uh, we're gonna wanna optimize this, but we're gonna look at why not to do it first so that we can learn how to do it correctly. I have a couple of uh, utilities on my side screen here that I'm just gonna bring in that um, I'm gonna use throughout this project. Um, this is some text. The JavaScript selects a line of text from this multi-line text. So um, I will uh, supply all of this, of course, but look, we can take a quick peek, it's very little JavaScript. So here we have some text being output and we know that we can move this around by changing its position. Uh, so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna, we want to bring it up top. We wanna start it off to the left, animate it in, and then animate it down. To do that, we're gonna use two envelope generators, uh, daisy chain together, so that the end of the one starts the beginning of the other. Doesn't need to be done this way, it's just the way I chose to. You could do uh, multiple segments, you could do many things. But for the sake of this, I'm going to separate them because it, it makes my, my two different value changes kind of easier. Um, I'm also going to grab some limit scale value actors from the side, which already have workable positions in, but they're basically the same as what I just scrubbed between there. So if I bring the output of this and this into here and trigger this, you can see one animation, next animation. This will be the horizontal and this will be the vertical. I trigger that, it comes in, it comes down. Comes in, comes down. So what we need to do is set its vertical location at uh, the initialization of the, the animation. So I'm gonna use a keyboard, keyboard watcher to uh, activate all of this. So that'll allow me to set that value and then create the animation. So there it is, in and down. As simple as we, we have it here. Now let's take a look at what kind of problem we might have with this. So this is a single piece of text being rendered onto a, uh, onto a background that is then being sent to the output, right? So if we look at the uh, CPU load in the bottom right corner here, if I press A and run this, you'll see we're up to 30, 35% uh, CPU usage just to move this one headline across the, the stage there. Now, it's also maybe worth noting that this, at this point that this text isn't at its clearest and is not rendering uh, as beautifully as we might like it to be, because the default setting for the text draw is drawing onto a canvas of 640 by 360. Uh, that's because the text draw doesn't have either a video input defining a canvas size for it, or the uh, output width and height set. So we could just go 1920 by 1080 here, and uh, that's going to change our output, and our text rendering is actually gonna be a lot cleaner. Another way of going about that, and one that I prefer, just because I can see exactly what I'm doing, is I use a background uh, color actor, which creates essentially a canvas. I use the get stage uh, size actor, and I feed that into the, uh, the background color. I feed that into the video feed. And you'll see why this later too, because what we're gonna do in creating this animation is we're going to uh, daisy chain together these text draw actors as well. Uh, so this kind of is the beginning of that daisy chaining and you'll see how that works. But I like to do this because I can see it and I can easily change what's going on here. So um, you just make it fully transparent and then we, we're not doing anything other than giving it a, a, a clear backdrop to draw onto. So again, if I press one, or A, it animates, it gets up to uh, nearly 60% that time, and 
I imagine that's higher now because the the texture size, the background is now full HD rather than that smaller default size, right? So when we actually want to create quality looking graphics, this is worse. Uh, this setup where we're rendering the text every frame uh, to a new position, which involves a lot of CPU calculation to do the uh, the complex shapes of the font and the aliasing, right? So um, this is what not to do. So next what we're going to do is uh, modify this in such a way that uh, we improve the performance drastically. All right, let's look at what we can do to improve this. What we don't want to be doing is using the horizontal uh, position for animation. So first thing I'll do is I will just take those out of there and reset this to zero. Um, so now we're just drawing to a stage in the center and everything's simplified that way. Um, the approach that we're taking now is that we're going to render this text onto a small uh, onto a small canvas that just fits the text so that we render the text once and then we uh, take that graphic that is produced and move it around, uh, which is way more efficient because there's no rendering of text happening at all. The, uh, the GPU is just simply moving a rectangle around on top of a rectangle. Uh, my favorite actor for doing this type of work is Matt++. Plus Plus. So what we need to do with Matt++ Plus Plus, though is we need to feed it our background canvas, all right? Because we are now gonna create a small canvas that we put on top of the larger canvas. So our projector will also move down to there, get that out of the way, and we're now going to take the, uh, the feed from the text draw actor and bring it in as our foreground. So what the Mat++ actor does by default is takes the, uh, the foreground and scales it to fit the background. Uh, in this case, we don't want to do that, but I'm going to change a few colors here just to make things a lot more obvious for us right now, because if you don't know these settings, uh, this can get a little bit complicated, I suppose is the way to look at it. Um, so yeah, so now our text draw has a, a background color and you can see that the text draw is, is once again outputting at our default size. Okay, now that we have a background from our text draw actor being fed into the Mat++ actor and it's being scaled to the full display output, we need to change the scale of FG to off. Now that is a scale of the foreground. As soon as we switch that, you can see that the much smaller uh, input size of 640 by 360 is being placed dead center on top of a canvas that is full HD. All right, and we still, it maintains transparency too, which is nice. Uh, we can even turn the alpha channel on here, which will allow it to uh, support alpha within our foreground, which is also gonna be important for what we're doing here. So with those two settings, we, uh, we are now able to start modifying our text draw canvas. And I'm going to um, punch out a couple numbers here, which I think might work okay for us. Okay, that's a small little piece of text. I'm going to uh, position it the way that we will be actually positioning it, just so that I can get a sense of its uh, our, its size in relation to the stage. And I think, uh, you know, like there, let's move it up to there. That's what it's gonna be like. Now, because of the way the text draw scale, uh, text draw actor works with the canvas, when we when we change the uh, output width and height there, the text got incredibly small, but then we have a, t a font size of 10. If we just crank that up, we can uh, get that into a nice little spot there. I'm going to, um, also change the the horizontal alignment to the left. I'm going to add um, a little bit of padding just to move it off the left there a touch. And uh, yeah, these are all little things that'll look about a lot better when the the stage is in full size. But 
now you can see it's it's in placement here, right? Uh, if we simply take our values for our vertical and more vertical and our horizontal, now that I've plugged that all in together, if I hit A, we will see there's a slight problem. It animates in the bottom and up to the top. Now, the reason it's doing that is because the Mat++ actor has the uh, destination vertical position swapped. Um, it's reversed to the way the text draw actor is. Uh, we could change the min uh, and max value scales here and try to automatically scale into the reverse. But because we're coming out of a, a limit scale value actor, which has the min max set, uh, the output set to min max is not going to automatically scale. We'd have to modify that value as well. So what I find just a lot easier is to just quickly reverse the values um, and everything's good to go. So in the top, down to the bottom, right? All right, so that's the same animation that we just had in the other frame, essentially, right? Size of the text a little different, but that can all be modified. We can change that. So this one in and down. 55% of the CPU. This one in and down, up to 30% on the CPU there. Uh, and now I tell you that is only happening, it, uh, that's happening because I'm running OBS and a few other things here. Um, in my earlier tests, that it's even quite a bit lower, but uh, what we'll show you here is that um, if we were to multiply this out. Uh, actually, you know what, let's just even just duplicate it. We won't change the placement of it, but we'll just um, animate two at once. So you get an idea. 70%, right? So 70% CPU to animate that twice. If I duplicate this, whoop, there we go, and animate both of them. Same, the same 30%. It really made no change to our CPU usage at this point because almost all of that is done on the GPU and we're actually only rendering that text. And you can see that it is there and they're slightly overlaid there. Uh, that text is only being rendered on enter scene or the beginning of the scene the, when it creates it one time and never needs to render it again. So there's very, very little... Um, CPU usage, and I don't know if you've noticed, but right now I'm running Isadora at 60 frames per second, so uh, uh, that co that's compounding the CPU usage as well. It depends what you're what you're doing there, but all right, all right. So that that is the quick overview of the approach that we want to use for this animation. Um, now to make this a little, well, let's just, let's just make it a little nicer to work with. So I'm happy with that. And reality up, uh, expose some parameters and chain them together to create uh, one far more interesting animation. So the only external input I want is uh, my trigger capability and my text um, right now. There will be a little bit more to change, but we'll take that for now. So I'll cut this away. I'll use, uh, add a user actor, paste it in, add some user actor, user inputs. Uh, first one will be for the trigger. Yeah. Um, user input, make this one for the, the text that comes in. Uh, okay, a string of lines, yeah. Trigger animation, I'm good with that. I actually want the trigger to be at the end. So we use this little button here to open up the uh, reorder user input and outputs so that we can change the order of those on the outside of this user actor. Um, I'm going to cut the projector and add a user, user output for the video. So now our video goes out. Um, I want to bring our background canvas in from outside. 
So user input is going to be the background. And uh, where is that coming in? That coming in after the animation trigger. So I'll put it here. OK. Um, oh, this changed to the wrong type on me. So trigger text. I want that to become text. And I want that to become text. And I will call this string of lines. It's easy to make those mutation uh, errors when you're switching things around with JavaScript because this little green dot, every time you disconnect it, it's able to change into other types, which will change the type of your user input. So just got to be aware of that. Make sure that you're forcing it into the type that it wants to be. It defaults to a number. So if you want to make it text, you need to have it linked to a text input already uh, so that that happens. All right, so I'm just going to create this, save this user actor setup. And I will rename this to uh, uh, headline fly in. OK. So first thing I'm going to add back is my background, because I know for a fact I want to start it on the clear HD background. All right, and if I add a projector back, um, we should, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, I forgot the text. Let's add some text on there, trigger that in. All right, our headline's back in place. Um, oh, and we'll add the trigger back in place. Yeah, it's all coming together pretty quick now. If I trigger that, animates in, animates down. Great, so in and down, love it. Um, but now what? Now we need to make this so that it's not a single standalone animation. And again, look, look at our CPU usage goes up to 26% there. And we're going to keep it pretty much around there as we extend this. Um, so let's just say I, you know, I was talking about how I want to daisy chain these. So we have a video that comes in here. Right, um, but we don't want to trigger them both at the same time. So we need something from the user actor to tell us when to trigger this. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to add a user output, and I'm going to. Um, I guess I'll put it over here. I'm going to take the same trigger that starts our second part of the animation, and I'm going to bring it way over there. This is going to be our mid trigger is what I'm calling it for now so and update that um, mid trigger is going to trigger that and now if I hit this it's in down so what happened right oh ha huh. I forgot the show the uh, projector, change the projector on that'll make a little bit of a difference here. So in, down, in, down. They both have the same text currently, and they both have the same uh, end position. So what we need to be able to do here is change the, we need to be able to change the end vertical location for each one of these lines of text and we need to be able to change the text for each one of these lines of text. So, user input, this is just gonna be a numerical one, which is gonna be the line selection. That's nice and easy. Uh, string of lines, line selection, right under it, background track, okay, good. And the, the final location for vertical, which is 45 here, which we probably want this one to be more like 36, whatever. We're going to uh, user input, make that dynamically set. So remember, it was 45 and end vert post. So end the vertical position. All right. I 
think that gets us something chainable or more so chainable anyway. Um, I don't like the order of these triggers, so I'll change that. This was going to be 45, and uh, this one was uh, 37.5, something like that. Right. Um, that's the first piece of text. This will be the second piece of. Nope, I want an, That's an integer. Let's change that like that. Okay. So we have those. And um, because I know that we're going to need quite a few of these, what I'm going to do is just add some calculations between. I guess I could put this inside the user actor, but um, I don't think I'm going to. Uh, first one I'm going to subtract. So I need I need an output because I want to create this input, and I need to know this from the previous actor. So um, yeah, we'll you will go uh, user output and. And vert posts. I think this will work. I hadn't. I don't think I did it this way last time. Um, this is kind of one of the fun things. I change this up all the time. So yeah, we got this. We want that number to be sort of uh, thirty-seven point five. Oh, uh, seven and a half is what I need to subtract to get my thirty-seven point five. And. Um, so I'll input that there. So we'll we'll do this little calculation between all these actors, just um, to keep things sort of simple, without getting too complicated here. Um, yeah. All right. And uh, that order of operations, I don't like that. So I will change that trigger text animation to there. Save and update all. All right, so that's great. Now if I click it, it does that and does that. Uh, now you'll see if I hit it, uh, it only updates them as they're getting called in that chain, right? So what we're also going to need on each one of these uh, is a reset. So basically the same as what we did here, um, but it needs to be able to be triggered separately from the, at the beginning of the animation. So I'm gonna move that there. Um, it doesn't hurt it to be triggered from the animation as well, but we're going to use a, uh, a user input once again, which is just going to reset. We're going to call that reset. And yeah, that's, that is cool. Um, let's see. I squished all this up a little too tight for this this phase of the development, but that's all right. So when this is first clicked, um, this one doesn't actually need it because it's the first thing in our chain, but all others are going to need to be reset. Uh, and you can see uh, our reset's not quite good enough, right? Uh, it's resetting the uh, vertical, but not a horizontal. In this case, uh, the first one works because it's starting to animate the horizontal instantly, so that's okay. But we also need the um, the horizontal position to be uh, reset. So where is our horizontal position? It's going to be this minus sixty, and. Uh, there's our vertical, so our horizontal needs to come down to um, destination horizontal right there. Yep. This all could be cleaned up just a little, I think. Make this a little easier to follow. Yeah, good enough. Um, our reset, our trigger, our end position and that okay it's fine with me save and update all reset reset now if we animate everything comes in as it should uh, 
Okay, let's, um, how many lines of text do I have in here? Four? Well, let's make it more. I think we can fit at least eight of these on this page. And get that going real quick here. So that's two. We will duplicate this. Oh, yeah, you know what? I only want to duplicate this to start uh, just because I need to get that calculation in the way. So what we'll do is we'll just get rid of this to start. That feeds across into our GPU. Our trigger is into our uh, trigger. Um, the reset, we will duplicate that down to here. Are we missing anything else? Yes, we're missing this value coming into here. All right. Now, now we can duplicate this part. Duplicate that down. And it's going to start moving ahead a little faster as we can keep doing these duplications. So now our end position value, our video, our middle trigger. All right, that sets all those up. If I click this, now hold shift, I can click it back and again and again. All right, what do we got? And line selection is zero, one, two, three, four. All right. Uh, We'll just copy that, duplicate this one more time. All right, place that here. Once again, take this so that we calculate a new position. Take the GPU so it passes along, it daisy chains that video into the next effect. They get drawn on top of each other constantly. Uh, we trigger the animation from the previous animation's trigger point. And uh, let's see, uh, what have we counted up to here? Zero, one, two, three, four. And this will be five. This will be six. This would be seven. Oh, and eight. We don't have eight lines of text currently, so I will just remove that. And this will be our final output. So, animate through that, just have a quick look. See what's, what's working, what isn't working. A few things are working, a few things aren't working. Um, some of the text hasn't made it to where it needs to be. Some of the resets are not in place yet. So again, I'll take this off. While I have hold of it, press shift, reselect. There, 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 and there. That should be all the resets in place. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Oh, right, yeah. I didn't do the text to all of them. So it's the same thing. Select with shift down. I'm just gonna put the text into every one of these. That's why we had a bunch of undefined because it didn't, not all of them had the uh, eight lines of text available to them yet. All right. Okay. I do believe um, that should work all right now. I will trigger the text so everybody has the text. Um, yeah, and if I click this, everybody resets and we animate one after another. Oh, some of the math hasn't been done for placements. What happened there? Did I not connect up all the math lines? Uh, 
well, I'll just leave this thing and come back. That should do it. Yeah, and everything now has the right values in it. And we're animating down. Now you can see that we're doing eight lines of this text. Uh, we get through all of that without going over around 50% CPU. And that's at 60 frames per second that's uh, animating. Um, uh, here, let's just, let's see this at full size. Open up stage preview here. Um, it's going to be a little tight to fit in the screen, so it won't, but we'll just see. Oh, looks like our initial off screen position is a little bit not perfect. So you can see them kind of trailing in at the beginning there. But I mean, hey, that might even be a design element. I don't know. But you can see the placement here is nice with that single line, single pixel line in between each one of these. Um, now we're doing, of course, we're doing this with the background in the text draw so that we can see the entire canvas area. But if we just go into any of these um, user actors now and change the uh, background so that it's fully transparent and update all, we now have fully transparent text flying over top of whatever it needs to be flying over top of, right? Um, and there are some pretty fun things you can do with this. Um, let me just copy in something I built while I was while I was uh, developing this. So I will copy this. It's a new scene from another project. And paste it in. Um, it's a little messier, but you can you can see there's user actors with positions and very much the same thing going on here. There's nothing uh, very much different. I built the I didn't build the user actor quite as pretty as the previous one, to be honest. But what I did do in here is uh, add some curvatures to the animations, and you'll see that that makes a, a pretty dramatic effect. The curvature really changes that coming in and dropping down. Uh, the other thing I did is I um, added multiple mats because I'm I'm I started to layer in multiple effects. I put some other stuff into this and you'll see that momentarily. If I go up to um, uh, this actor here, I call it my sprite background. And the sprite background uh, is the same size as the text I'm writing onto. Uh, so what I've done is basically rather than just using a background image, I'm creating some live animation that feeds in because it is a video feed we're putting into that. It can it can be uh, animated and have some detail and stuff. So let's uh, let's open this up and just just show you um, what that can look like. Again, it's not going to fit my screen entirely, but we'll get it there close. So. That's pretty nice, right? So once you learn this technique and you play around with it for a little while, you can make some really great animation uh, without taxing your CPU. When I first was developing this, what I was thinking that this would be is a menu. These could be menu items for a uh, kiosk type of system where you do mouse tracking to uh, to allow the, the buttons to be clicked on and trigger different scenes or whatnot. So, uh, yeah. All right, I hope you enjoy this animation and see a way that you might be able to use this technique in your own work. Thank you for joining me for Build It.